Velociraptors here to greet us. We're going to steer clear of those guys, though. Find some more friendly dinosaurs to say hello to. This guy here is a swamp dweller. He runs just as fast on land as he does in the water. He's able to go that fast in the water because of that big fin on his back. He is a pescatarian, which means he eats primarily fish. But he can't be tempted to eat other kinds of meat, so let's not tempt him too much. <laughs> They say everything is bigger in Texas. That goes true for this guy here is actually a native of the Texas area, a Quetzalcoatlus. Now, he's not actually a dinosaur. He is a petrodon. He has a 30-foot wingspan. He's actually too big to fly, so he uses those wings for gliding. Using the heat off the earth, he can go about 30 miles. Oh, well, here we have a raptor on the wrong side of the fence. We have to call somebody about that. That guy keeps getting out. And here we have an iguanodon. Oh, and here we have a Sucumimus. He's related to that Spinosaurus we just saw. He just has a bunch of swamp dweller and pescatarian. You can see he's got a fish caught in his mouth there for lunch. His modern day descendants are the crocodiles and alligators. Here looks like a thing one and thing two. We're going to steer clear of those guys. Oh, it's even a thing three. Looks like here we have a family of stegosauruses. You see the baby up there on the... These guys get up to about 6,000 pounds, and they get that large as eating vegetation alone, which is pretty impressive considering they didn't have ranch dressing back then. They have those big scales on the back called scoots. They have the same consistency as turtle shells. They have spikes on their tail. They can whip that tail into their face to protect themselves from predators. Such as this Allosaurus right here. He is a cousin to the T-Rex. He has a couple of differences though. This guy here has about 70 serrated teeth that are all curved backwards to help keep his prey in. And whereas the T-Rex only has two fingers on each hand, this guy has three, with nine inch nails on each one, which also coincidentally is his favorite band. Uh, this bright yellow fellow right here is called a Parasaurolophus. He has a crest on his head he uses for calling its mate and regulating heat. Scientists actually believe he's covered in bioluminescence, so they should think he can glow in the dark. So it's not bad enough he's bright yellow. He really got the short end of the stick when it comes to playing hide and seek at night. <laughs> and here we have a little baby. You might have a black Ford Mustang here today. You might have a little trouble getting home. These, these raptors are terrible auto mechanics. They're really good at wrecking our research station, though. My goodness, look at this carnage. These raptors are like wolves in that they're pack hunters, but they're more closely related to birds. They have a hollow skeleton, but not hollow like a straw, more like a honeycomb, making them extremely agile. They can reach up to speeds of 40 miles per hour, which is faster than this tram could go, so we should probably get a bit of a head start on them. <laughs> this smiling, friendly fellow here is called a Brachiosaurus. And they're very friendly, but they ignore the rules of the road entirely. Yeah, we're going to find a little detour here because they're blocking our path. They have the neck of a giraffe and the body of an elephant to help them reach that vegetation on the very tops of the trees. And this chatty little fellow right here is called a Celiophyces. Now, he is similar to the raptor in that they're carnivore and a pack hunter, but his pack is a little bit larger. Recently in New Mexico, they found a fossil site that had about 500 of these guys. Meaning they travel in extremely large packs, and they just had a Burning Man-like party. There's another one right here staring down this Pladiosaurus here on our left. This plated meat. And scientists aren't quite sure if it travels on two legs or four, but one thing's for sure. He definitely does not skip arm day. And here we have a teenage Stegosaurus. And you can tell it's a teenager because it's as far away from its parents as it can get. And here we have an Edmontonia. Everyone say hi, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. His modern day descendant is the horny toad. He has those spikes on his back for defense, but I think it makes him look like a giant pineapple. <laughs> this little mutated ostrich right here is called a chitty pooty. I swear I'm not making up these names. <laughs> the chitty pooty is protecting its nest here against this troodon. Oh, looks like we have some troodons on our left here as well. 
Now, these guys are actually nocturnal, so I'm not sure what they're doing up during the day unless somebody snuck in again some coffee. But they're considered nest raiders, and they will infiltrate other species' nests and replace the eggs with their own. Getting some very cheap babysitting that way. Uh, and here on the left and the right here, looks like we have some copies. Uh, these carnivorous little ankle biters are not as good pets as you might think. I mean, for one thing, they will devour you in your sleep, and they don't seem to get anybody on car insurance like you might think. And here we have a pair of Dilophosauruses. If you saw the movie Jurassic Park, you saw these guys feature with a big fan on their neck and spinning venom on the bad guys. Uh, there's no scientific evidence suggesting they actually do spit, unless you want to count Spielberg's film as a documentary. Now we're entering our family area. Well, looks like we have a pair of Quetzalcoatl atlases here. See the female up there on the ridge, and the male here with the pattern on its wings. Now he has that pattern on its wings to attract a mate, because they sure they get it right. And they have a nest over here with some eggs in it, but there's also some smaller eggs in there too, which makes me think the troodons are got to some of them. And here we have a Diabloceratops and his babies. The zoo tends to find out if you take those babies home. I found that out the hard way. And Diablo Ceratops gets his name for those four horns on its head. He's only born two of them, the other two growing later. He, of course, has a much more famous cousin over here to our left. You know what's that one's called? Triceratops. You can tell by the three horns. Uh, he has about 300 teeth over the span. Uh, speaking of predators, this guy here is probably the most well-known predator of all of them, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. They get up to about 50 feet long, about 15,000 pounds, about 12,000 pounds of bite force. I see a quill of egg gets set on by an elephant. Now, they're actually too heavy to sit on their own eggs, so they just grab mud or whatever else available to incubate those eggs for them. When they get ready to hatch, they come popping out like angry potatoes and teeth. <laughs> This hairy guy with a bullet over here is called a Deinonychus. He is a scavenger like the modern day vulture. Very good for the ecosystem, but not very good for this Amargosaurus here on our left. Friendly herbivore. He's also extremely rare. So far, scientists have only discovered one of these guys fossilized to date. 